good. Yeah. yeah. I'm Rebecca Halleck. I'm a sophomore in DMV, and we're going to talk about Arduinos and lily pads. So I've been working in a lab with lily pads for about a year now, and we're going to talk about Stitchfest and what type of stuff we'll need to know for it. So Stitchfest, Stitchfest is a new addition to Panops this year, and what it is is there's 15 teams. Each are going to be given a box of just tech stuff, and a lot of the tech stuff we're going to be talking about today. And the design challenge is you have to create something wearable. And we're going to go through how you can do that. So first is, what is a lily pad? And on the screen right now, there are a bunch of examples of lily pads. So a lily pad is a sewable electronic piece that used together can create interactive textile designs that are completely soft and flowable and made out of fabric. Now, what you can do with lily pads is you can detect stuff from the environment. So if you see over here, can you see my mouse? Yes. So for example, this is an accelerometer. No, that's not an accelerometer. That detects the light. This is a light in itself. So you have a lot of different sensors that you can use in together with this Arduino. This is an example of an Arduino. And this lily pad is a programmable chip. So we're going to talk about how you can program these chips and what we can do with them. And if we look over here, this is actually the accelerometer. And this is an MP3 player. So they make a lot of different variations of these lily pads so that you can do a lot of different stuff with them. So now, what can you do? So here are just three small examples of what you can do. So if we go look at what these projects are, is this one up here is a shirt that detects when you have emails. So what it does is you have your lily pad, and it's connected via Bluetooth, and there's the battery. And it lights up, in binary, the amount of emails you have. So if you have three emails, the light is a second light, two, and one will light up. And you can have a, a ton of emails, and it's just a really creative way of detecting when you have to do your email. The next project is a light, is a sweatshirt that has flicker lights. So for people who are biking and want to detect that they're turning at night, this is a perfect example of a useful and practical implementation of lily pads. And the last one is just something cool, as he wrote it cool where um, he created this wristband that when you move around, it has an accelerometer, and it spells letters and words. So these are just three small examples of what you can do with these small little microcontrollers. So now let's talk about materials. This is a lily pad. We're going to go more in depth about what it is, but pretty much it's a circular piece of metal or plastic, and it has all these little holes around them, which you're going to sew into. The next thing is conductor thread. So something that distinguishes lily pads from typical Arduinos is that instead of using soldering and wires and having to get all into that really hardware, like rough stuff, you're using thread. And over here, I passed around, if you guys are a little bit in, I can pass it around again, is conductor thread. And how you stitch your circuits is you stitch it with this. So you don't have to solder them. You only use the thread. You have to use needles if you're going to use thread. So some of the frustrating parts of our we of lily pad arduinos are that you have to actually thread your needles and sew, rather than soldering, which can be easier. Another thing that's great is alligator clips. So if you're not sure where you want to sew, in like when you use regular arduinos, you just kind of plug the wires in. But here you will use alligator clips just to trial and error and connect the circuits. The next part is the FDIC. FDDI, sorry, breakout port, port, which is this little piece that connects the Arduino to your computer. So how you program this little chip, which I have an example over here, which I can pass around when we're done, is by connecting it to your computer and uploading our Arduino code to it, which we're going to talk about Arduino programming later in this talk. Okay. And then finally, you have LEDs. That are well, I guess devices. Everyone here knows what an LED is. However, these ones are really pretty and they're designed really well. And they actually have fantastic light colors and different types of things that make it distinguishable and really pretty so that you can make these interactive, nice looking things. And then we should pass them around. And finally, our sensors, which are what make the projects cool. So if we look at these sensors, I've talked about a few of them so far, but this one is a Bluetooth connector. This is a clock, so it can tell real time. This is an electric imp board, which can be connected to the internet. And that is a light sensor. So now let's talk about basics of circuits. Does everyone here know what a circuit is? 
Yeah, okay, so I can go through this fairly quickly. I'm sure a lot of you guys have So the basis of the Arduino circuit is you have your power source, which over here is the battery, and you have whatever you're connecting your power source to. So in this case, it's a light. And how this battery works is it comes from the positive side, and the current travels from positive all the way around to the negative. And while doing this, you attach the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative, and you can kind of, kind of create these interactive circuits. And that's the basic structure of what you're going to be doing. So as long as you kind of understand this model, where it goes from positive and it goes to negative, you can kind of build any amount of complicated things. Right. So let's look at the lily pad structure. This is an example of a lily pad. And let's talk about what the, the different parts are. So I'm holding one up over here. The first thing that you can notice is you have a lot of these little holes kind of scattered around. And what these little holes are are their pins. And they can be programmed, and they each symbolize a different part. So if we look at the positive, similar to like the positive in the previous slide, it just totally sends current the entire time. So it'll just continually send this current, and it'll send it to the negative, which is the ground. In this case, these are tabs and snaps, but you don't have to worry about that. You're not going to be using that. The next part is there's an on-off switch, and then you have a lot of these kind of numbered holes. And what do we do? Like, how do you how do you get to them? And this is what we're going to talk about when we go to Arduino. Is you can tell a specific hole what to do, and you can tell it if it's input or if it's output. You can give it have it detect input and detect the current traveling through it, and send information to it, or you can send information. Two, you can take information from it from the environment, or you can send it to the environment. And then you finally have a battery, and it is programmed through these prongs. So you attach this little chip to the prongs using your cord, which we're going to be supplying, so you don't have to worry about having this stuff. And you can program this only time. Does anyone have any questions about this? Yeah? Uh, so, Okay, yeah, so how it works is you have, it comes with, every lily pad will come with a positive and negative. The rest of them are programmable. But the positive and negative, the positive will always have a current coming from it. So if you ever need something for your project when it's lit, like when it's turned on, it's always be lit, you can attach it to the positive. All the other pins will are programmable. So you can tell it to light up when you want it to. Or you can tell it to light up all the time as well. Yeah? So is the negative also programmable or is it just ground? The negative is the ground. So whenever you connect something to any of the pins, it has to be connected to the negative. Now, we'll talk about this a little bit more in depth, but something that's a little frustrating about this is that everything that you connect, the negative has to be connected. So when you draw out your project, you're going to want to like, draw out the lines very explicitly because if your traces overlap, which we'll get to, it can cause problems. So this is an example of a really tough circuit. And this is a very basic example. So as you can see, you have your lily pad, and this is a negative, and this is pin 9. So pretty much what this circuit is doing is it, anything that you program off of the circuit to pin 9, it will tell this buzzer to buzz. And the buzzer part, you connect the positive to a 9, and the negative to the negative. So whenever you connect something, you, check, you connect the positive to either a positive or a pin, and the negative to the negative ground. So we're going to go to that. So over here, this circuit essentially tells the buzzer when you program it to buzz. And everyone sees how when you stitch it, you have to actually loop it around the hole and really make a really tight connection. Because instead of having, you don't want to solder to connect to the circuit, but instead you only have this thread. So you have to make sure that the connections are tight and there's no loose edges. So does everyone here know how to sew? Who here doesn't know how to sew? Actually, who here does know how to sew? It's okay if you don't. <laughs> if you don't know how to sew, you'll learn how to do it. It's something that you should know in life, so it would be very practical to learn. Now, something fun about what we got, or not fun, is debugging. <laughs> this is a different type of debugging than you normally get. So normally when you're debugging your programs, it's like looking at your computer and seeing like, where did I cast it as an int or as a float, and that type of debugging. Here, you really have to check your threads. Because there's a lot of errors that can happen with this just by sewing it to the wrong place. So can anyone tell me why that this is an error? Why that red circle is there? Can you see the red circle? 
No. Okay. Well, there's a red circle right over here. Right. It doesn't cross into the other thing. Yes, exactly. So here, this is a good example of how you can only access one thing at a time. See so over here? I don't know if you can see it, but the purpose of this is there's a thread that goes from pin, the negative pin to A5. And that would cause a short in the circuit if you have A5 all the time, like set to on. So you have to be really careful when you're sawing. And here's some other examples of errors that can occur. Now, these are all shorts in the circuits. And when you're creating your projects, if you're doing something like sewing onto a sweatshirt, like that track jacket from earlier, you have to be really careful that your threads don't touch and that they don't conduct electricity. And also, sometimes like your skin can conduct electricity. So you have to be careful with that. So there's a lot of factors that play into this. Yep? Yeah. Are none of the wires insulated at all? No. Why not? Because it's spread. Oh, OK. <laughs> So that's one of the challenges. See, it's really easy to sew. Yeah. Oh, did you have a question? Yeah. Okay. It's really easy to sew circuits. However, you should be careful that your spaces don't overlap. Yeah. If you put layers of cloth in the chain, then you're fine. Yeah. And also, there's conductive uh, conductive fabric that you can use. If, let's say you want a large conductive patch, but when you touch it, it completes the circuit. You can use conductive fabric, and we will be provided some. Another thing that you can do if you want to be a little bit more happy is you can get aluminum foil and use that to conduct electricity. And what you can do, as I think we'll be providing this as well, is some aluminum foil that is back on the fabric. So you can put that onto your projects and iron it onto your projects. We'll, we'll be providing irons and everything that you will ever need, sewing machines. So if you don't know how to use a sewing machine, we will teach you. <laughs> okay. So as, as you can see, it can be tedious creating these designs with sewing. And let's say you make a mistake. Because can you imagine sewing your entire project and then realizing that it's all wrong and you have to re-sew it? So the benefit of this is you have alligator cuts to prototype for. And we definitely encourage prototyping with lily pads. And actually what I do in my research is I use a lot of hardcore, like different, um, different Arduinos. And what I do is I prototype it in lily pad all the time using um, alligator clips, and it works out perfectly, and you can get it done really quickly and efficiently and see if it works or not. OK, now let's download Arduino. Does everyone have this downloaded onto their computer? We're going to take a moment to download it now. So can you go to the Arduino page? And I will open it up. Wow. So everyone, just if you Google Arduino, it will be the first thing up. Download, if you have a Mac, download the one for Mac, if you have Windows, 1.05 will be perfect. Fine. And let's see. Yeah, question. Uh, so we, uh, we're getting a box of like yeah. random parts. Are they random or is it like? You will be able to, there's, there's going to be some choices that you'll have to make when you're bring your box together. So okay. you're not going to, it's not going to be completely random. And everything will be related. We're not going to write something that you can use. OK, yeah. So yeah. we'll find that out on the track. Yeah. But like the stuff that we're talking about today, you can imagine will be present. Or some of it will. Do you have any more questions while you're downloading things? Um, recommend, I recommend you guys bring in the stuff that you want. Like, if you want to do a project using sweatshirts and jeans and some clothing apparel, bring it. Also, like, if you need anything else, most of the stuff will be provided. However, you can probably run out and get it. However, you shouldn't need to. Arduino just runs. Look at this. Mm -hmm. It just runs. Yeah, it's fantastic. And have any of you guys used processing before? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> um, but it's right, It's formatted. I'll talk about it in a second once you guys have it downloaded. Is anyone still waiting for it to be downloaded? Okay, you're waiting. Okay. Oh wait a second. Don't worry. <laughs> it's okay. I don't know. <laughs> Okay. Any 
more questions? Paul, can you continue? It could be about stitch vest, it could be about. Yeah? Um, so you mentioned that if it touches your skin, that could be a problem. Do you recommend having like a shirt on top of the shirt, or is that there are other ways around it? Um, there are other ways around it. I mean, I've never had it become a big issue with my projects, but some people have had that issue. But if they have a lot of just like wires on the inside where like you're wearing just touching your skin, it can be Okay. So it's just something to be cautious about, but you'll see. Yeah. Would it ground a circuit? Yeah. Or it will just mess it up. It, it won't function properly. Okay. Can you like measure conductivity with that? Yeah, we'll have voltmeters so you can measure the conductivity and make sure. Or do we do it on board? Do we do it on the upgrade now? Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll have the materials that you can do that. Sweet. Okay, download it. Or not. Just go for it? Okay. You're almost there. All right, so everyone has our Arduino open. Let's go back to the slide. So the Arduino. Great. So this is the basic structure of an Arduino code. You have the top part, which is like your comments and what you want to label it. The bottom part is the you know, variables, you declare them as global. And then the most important parts are the setup and the glue. So how this works is it's very similar to processing, if you've seen that before, where the setup runs before your code starts. So in your setup, you're going to want to get your program running, declare it, pin an output input, and do a ton of other stuff, and get your code working and running. The second part, is the loop section, which is where it tells your Arduino code project to just continually loop. So let's open up the exact code and we can talk about it. But before that, um, there's a few things that you have to be careful with when you're using Arduino, because you have to specify the board that you're working with and where you're programming it from. So if you have it open, you can see that in your tools, you're going to want to adjust the serial port. And currently, if you don't have a USB port plugged in, you won't be able to have this option. But you, when you program it, you're going to be using a USB, so we'll have, you'll have that pop-up show. The next thing is that you want to set it to COM4, which is the best for Arduino. And finally, you want to select Lily Cut Arduino with AT Sega 328, which, if you're confused about what to set it to, there's specs on the specific Lily Cuts that you can look up and just like clarify which one you want to use. OK. So once you write your code, you upload it to the board. And you'll see what happens. So now let's make it blink. So I have this Arduino up here, and we can turn off the lights once we actually program it and see it blink. But we're going to show you up here how to make it blink. So the first thing is let's just talk about the programming environment. So this button over here is used to compile your code. And this is used to send it to the board. So if we were to send it to the board, currently I have nothing plugged in. So it's going to compile an error. Because there's no code there and there's no board. So typically, Arduino is very good about telling you when it doesn't work and when it does work. And it can be frustrating when it doesn't work. However, online, there's a lot of just like stack overflow questions about it. So if you have issues there, there's also trouble shooting, flow, uh, trouble shooting flow charts for lily pads that are very helpful. The next part is a new, which if you want a new document, you click it, open, and save. Now, what we're going to do is if you have it open, open, basics, blank. Everyone has that? And you can see when you press open, there's a ton of examples. So, for example, if you want to play with a sensor, they have all these, they have display, they have a lot of different things. Not all of them are relevant to LilyPad, but it's definitely good to look at them and see just what you can do with it and try and analyze what the code does. So let's look at this. How this code works is in your lily pad, you have pins. And pins can be represented by hints. This is just common stuff that you also learn, and I'll tell you about. So in this lily pad, and in every lily pad, the one over here as well, if you guys look back, there's a pin called 13 that is just the light. So currently, what this program is doing is it's telling the computer that 13 is a light. And you can name this anything you want. It doesn't have to be LED. It can be A, B, C, whatever you like your code to be. The second part is the setup. So it's going to run before the code works. And pin mode, LED. So it's telling the pin, it's telling the computer that the LED number 13, that represents 13, is an output. 
So there's two different options, output and input. So when you're using a sensor that takes in information from the environment, you're going to want to be using input for a pin. So you'll connect with stitch like an input to a pin, and you'll declare it as input, and you can detect, detect it as analog or digital. Does everyone know the difference between analog, analog and digital? Yep? Anyone want clarification? You're good? OK. And finally, the loop. So can anyone tell me what this loop will do? Just by looking at it and guessing and seeing what it says. <laughs> yeah. It's going to blink on and off every second. OK. So let's see. I'm going to plug it into my computer and upload it. And we'll see. I'll try and turn off the lights. So when you guys are looking at this right now, you can upload it. But if you want after, you can check that your computer works and it is compatible. Um, so let's upload it. And as you can see, right now, I have, can you see the light? Cool. So right now, it should, you see the orange light. Now I'm going to turn this on and actually pass it around. And as you guys can see, there is a green flashing light on this. So to pass it around. So if I wanted to program a different, how would I change this code to make it work? Yeah? You change the input. You put it to the Exactly. And actually with Lilypad, there's letters too. So you can say like A2, and it will work as well. So endless, I'm going to pass around this one, which isn't programmed, but we'll pass it around. You can see the la labels on them. And program them. Here, I can have that. So this is a basic Arduino structure of a code, and when you're doing yours, it's going to be very similar to this. And there's tons of tutorials online that will show you how to do like different sensors. So let's say you want to have a touch sensor that when you touch two pieces of like aluminum, you want it to do like play a sound. Which actually, in like, we go to high schools and teach lily pads to them. Very basic stuff, not the stuff that you're going to be doing. But we have them make little monsters that start singing when you press both their arms and close the circuit. So that's just a very basic example. I should have brought it, but hmm? your pictures. OK, so if you want to see it after, you can go over there and just look at a project and what it would look like. Any questions about yet? Yeah. Um, how long will you? Battery without a battery. Um, I'm not sure the exact spot, like the exact time, but it lasts. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, can you add a battery to it? Is it needed? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <coughs> yeah. Are there any solar like uh, modules? Do you think they can like get solar energy? I'm sure there are. I mean, actually, what we're working on in our lab is printing like batteries and making them convert. So we're working on different different things. Yeah. yeah, we're going to actually go through that right now. <laughs> you read my mind. Cool. Um, so I'm going to actually pass around this cord. So where, wherever the Arduino is, and if you have it open, you're welcome to try programming it as well. Does anyone want to just play around with it right now? No? Yeah, okay. And then we'll talk about some others. Two. Get it open. Go ahead. Which other is this? This is the three. Great. So now let's talk about the sensors and how they work. So we're going to go through a bunch of different sensors. The first one is a light sensor. So what it does is it outputs an analog between 0 and 5 of how light the room is. So if it's really dark, it'll be 0. Or if you're in a dark room, it'll be 0. And if you're in sunlight, it'll be 5. And how this works is you will take this negative, and you'll attach it to the negative of the lily pad. The negative for the lily pad, and you'll take the positive and attach it to a specific pin, and you'll designate that pin to be what will it be in or output. Input, perfect. OK, so any questions about a light sensor? And then you can use this information in your program and say, when it's really dark out, turn the lights on. Yeah? 
Uh, there, are, uh, there are three holes. The positive there, and negative. What's the S? The S. Um, probably another. I don't know the exact specs of it off the top of my head, but everything is online. If I don't, if I don't cover the exact details right now, everything's online. I'm just going through what you can use and what you're interested in. I totally would advise looking up online and reading the specs for it. Next one is a buzzer. So it just makes a little buzzing sound. It uses two pins, and would this be output or input? Output, exactly. So you will attach the negative, again, to the ground, and the positive to a pin, and you can program it. Next one is a tricolored LED. So it has an RGB value, and what you do is you attach the RGB values to your lily pad, and they would be designated as output, and then you can program them to specific values, and you can get literally any color of light. And the best thing about this one is that when I work with it, it's really bright. I mean, we can get a lot of different color variations. It's not like one of those cheap LEDs that kind of double flashes like the color. You actually get the right color. The next one is really fun, which is the accelerometer, which have you guys used before? Anyone who uses an accelerometer? No? Yes? Okay. Well, you can detect motion, you can detect inclination, vibration, and you have the X, Y, and Z pins, which you put in as input, and then you can use this information. When you use the accelerometer, you have to do some math behind it just to calculate what the information means. But it's really good once you do the calculations. And I'm sure you can find them online. Finally, the temperature sensor. And if anyone tell me what this does, it detects temperature. It goes from 0 to 25 Celsius, 30 Celsius. And it can also detect something fun is physical heat. So if you're like really hot in a jacket, you can have your jacket light up. Or you can do detect of like physical things. So it's very useful. And once again, you have the same pins. More interesting is internet connection. What you can use is an electric an electric imp. And you connect these. This is actually something you'll have to solder. So there's very few parts that you'll have to solder. However, the electric imp is not made in lily pad circular free form. So if you use this, you're going to have to use a little bit more security technical stuff. So it connects, ooh, it connects to Wi-Fi. And something really cool about Electric Imp, which I would completely recommend, is that you use a program that's actually on your cell phone. So and you attach it to a Wi-Fi module. So we'll be providing some Wi-Fi modules there. So you don't have to worry about connecting to Wi-Fi because air pen that can be a pain. Um, and you attach it with a blink pattern, and it's a really cool program once you, if you learn to do it. I used it for a project over the summer that was in actually all, most of the free libraries in Philadelphia. We created a light-up interactive mural, and we connected them to the internet using these chips. And it was very, it took a little time to get used to how it works. However, once we did, it was very practical. Next is Bluetooth. So let's say you want to connect it to a cell phone or a computer. You can use this module. Again, it has to do with solder, however, there will be soldering stations there to so um, You can send information. And for more information, it is very down here. So if you want to look at the specs of how it works and how to program it, it will be there. Any questions so far about the sensors? Because that's, I just did a few sensors over here. Any questions? No? Look cool? Do you have ideas of what you want to do? <laughs> yeah? Um. What would we use? I guess it would be on the internet, but there would be some sort of application that you download on your computer or your phone to, to mm -hmm. do the Bluetooth stuff. Yeah. Okay. And same with the electric end. The electric end has a special phone program and an internet thing, which can be a little bit buggy, but once you get working, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think we'll be, we'll be providing extra. OK. So to wrap things up, troubleshooting, the best part about LilyPads is everything's really visual because it's made for arts and crafts, like arts and crafts and technical purposes and kind of projective fabric, bringing the craftiness to tech. So they have all these funky diagrams of how to troubleshoot. Because when you're in a coding class, you don't have this kind of pretty visualization. There's also the internet if you have questions, but most of your problems can be solved with like simple sewing problems can be solved. And now there's some links for useful 
Yeah. And if you have any questions, let me know. Yes? I'm going to be posting these slides. Okay. So if you want me to look at like a cool example, if you want to do that. So this is a wearable display that Leah Buckley was actually the founder of. This is a very graphic set, it's most technical. You guys are going to want to go more technical than this. This is just like really pretty graphics with a lot of LEDs. Right. She can change it based on like, the movements and everything. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of planning. You're not going to want to do that any LEDs. But something cool and technical is let me open it. There is the heart and pulse sensor, but we can go to the fine home detector, which uses. There's tons and tons of examples online. I was thinking of doing it with the heartbeat. The heartbeat, yeah, someone's done that. But you can do a different version of it that does like other stuff. There's so many different projects and different like design problems in a way that you can solve using it. So this detects when where you are in the room, so you can use it to find your home. I don't know when you would want to use it, but I'm sure you guys can come up with a practical thing. And that was just someone's project. There's tons of different projects. So you did a fine home detector. And there's a heartbeat from a pulse sensor and making music. There's all different things that you can do with these projects. And I'll post some more links of how to do it, how they did it. And there's a ton of tutorials online. So the first thing I advise doing is when you get to pen apps, there is, I think there's a website you can go to it. And ecrafting.org is also fantastic if you want to see different people's projects because they've been uploaded to it and it's a new website. So getting started, look at it. E-sewing projects, it will give you the sewing basics. If you want to do an LED circuit, Lily Arduino for programming, it will give you all different problems and solutions to it. So if you want to do sensors, everything is here. We give you example code. So if we look at this code. So when you guys design, decide what you're going to do, I would advise looking up and researching previous projects and previous code and finding to edit it so it makes it even cooler and newer. Because we're into innovation and we're going to see what you can create. It. Any more questions? We've never had that issue. But I'll let you know if we do run into it. <laughs> Great. So that was a quick tech talk. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. How many people have signed up for Chick Fest? You signed up? <laughs> yeah, like the beginning of the next like half an hour. Okay, awesome. It's open for registration. I believe all the teams are full. However, well, not all the teams are full. They're all they're all the signups are full, but the teams aren't full. So I'm sure that you could join in on a team that has already been created, or if they get off and don't want to do it, you can join. So I would recommend signing up as soon as possible. All the teams will find out if they were accepted tomorrow. And also find out how many people are on their team and how many people are the team. Yeah, so they don't. Yeah. yeah. So they can play with people. They don't care about that. Yeah, of course. Swapping out of teams. Oh, yeah, I remember. You don't need it. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Great. So I actually have more lily pads over here. If you want to look at them, program them, play with them, let me know. And also, I will be at Stitch Fest the entire time, so you can ask me questions. Yeah. Okay. Could it read that output? Probably. If you send one, you can It would have to only release one. It seems like it's too simple, but I like that. Great. And that's why it's great to try to make it more complicated. But it is really yeah, so it's not hard to do. It's just like you can be creative. We want to see what you guys can do that's creative with materials. Because a lot has already been done. Yeah. But we want you guys to break the limits and do new things and cool.